Hi, I'm Keith Fenwick. In this programme, I've chosen another painting from my book, Acrylics in a Weekend. But this time, we're showing the versatility of acrylics we're painting on canvas, and we're going for a walk in the woods. But the first thing you've got to learn about acrylics is, particularly painting on canvas, is your brush must be moist but not wet. If you put your undercoating on too wet, then you put your second coat on, it's going to skid all over your canvas. So the first thing is, don't paint your underpainting too wet. So I'm going to wet the brush and I'm going to take off the surplus. We're going to mix some cobalt blue with a bit of white and we're going to do crisscross strokes. Now I need, I can tell from that that I need just a little bit more water on the brush but not a lot. Here we go, white and cobalt blue. We're doing crisscross strokes. Look, this is my Whopper brush that I'm using. We need a large brush to cover. We need a large brush to cover. I don't know what's happened there. I've got a bit of green in. I'll take it out. I can overpaint. Don't know where that's come from. Crisscross strokes, and then we'll blend it in. Let's get rid of this dark bit here. It's appeared. Crisscross strokes and we'll level it off doing horizontal strokes. I'm going to put some white clouds in the moment. Just want to cover the canvas. I'm going to just add a little bit of red, not a lot. Just to put a bit of pink down the bottom here. Just a bit of lizard crimson, a bit of raw sienna to get like a peachy colour, a bit of white. I'll just paint that in down here like that. Just add a bit of variety to the colour in the sky. Now it's a good idea to stand back and have a look at it. I'm going to go do horizontal strokes and just blend it in, look. Like that. Now we're going to change to the large stippler brush and I'm going to put in some white clouds. So I'm just going to tease it in like that first of all. Now I'm going to blend that in with my fingers. This is so relaxing. The advantage of course if anybody steals your painting it's got your fingerprints on. Need a little bit more there. I'll just dab my finger in the paint. Look, this should be in every doctor's surgery. It's so relaxing, gets rid of all your tensions. I'm just blending that in, softening some of the edges, and that will do. The next thing we've got to do is to put in some trees. But before I do that, I'm going to cover the land area with a bit of masking tape. So I'm going to put that across here. I'm using three watt, three quarter inch wide masking tape which allows me to bend it easily because I don't want the top of a field to be straight, not in a painting. So we'll put that in there and using the large stippler we'll rough out the shape of the trees. Some Payne's grey, some sap green and I'm just going to stipple look. Using the corner of the brush, I'm just doing this for speed. We'll finish off with my unique tree and foliage brushes. Don't make them all in a straight row, it's boring. The tops need to be a bit higher than some. We don't just want a horizontal line. Right, a bit of Payne's Grey now, a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of green. I've got a dark background, because trees are dark on the inside and light on the outside. Right now, I'm looking at the shaping of the trees. I don't want them all on the same level, look. Dark around the bottom here. Return the brush and I'm going to just scratch out a bit of tree structure using the wonder knife. This is a group of trees but I'm going to paint each one as an individual tree as part of the whole, part of the group. Now we need to dry that before we put on the overpainting. It's time to put the foliage in now. And I'm going to use one of my unique tree and foliage brushes. 
and we're going to start with a bit of light yellow, yellow Hansa, with a bit of white, just a touch of green, and we're going to put some foliage on. We're just going to step a light you look, you hold the brush very lightly between thumb and forefinger, and all we do is stipple away. Don't be worried about this. My granddaughter's three year old and she's doing the stippling at play school. Trees are going to be dark at this side, lighter at this side, to take your eye down behind the dark tree group on the left. So we're going to darker green now as I come back. I want a variety of greens here. What I'm doing is stippling. But I'm thinking of each tree as an individual tree. Just changing the greens as I go along. I'm going between yellow light hansa, titanium white, hooker's green dark, and I'm using a little bit of cadmium orange hazel. I want these trees on the far left to be very light and I'm just putting a little bit of cobalt blue in to give them a cool colour. Going along putting in some highlights we'll have a little bush there. I'm going to leave this for a moment till I go and go the other side now till this dries. Let's take off the tape. That gives an uneven surface to the top of the field and I'm going to use a little mask here and I'm going to put the large group of trees on the left hand side. Now these trees need to be darker, so it's Payne's grey, Hooker's green, and these need to be further down. So here we go again, just put it on quickly like that, look. This brush is ideal for speed. Although I can paint trees with it as well, of course. Beauty of acrylics is, when you paint outdoors, unlike oil paints, by the time you finish your painting, it's reasonably tacky to carry away. I've ruined more car boots without wet oil paintings than anything. Now I think we need a fir tree in there. So I'm going to go to the three quarter flat and we're going to put a couple of fir trees in. We're going to have one up here, look. And we'll have one here. And all we do is we rock the brush. This is a three quarter flat to give the impression of a fir tree. just breaks down the trees. In fact, I think we'll do that just a little bit higher. Right, we need to dry this now. I've changed to another brush now. I'm going to use my angle brush, specially designed for fir trees, edging river banks, tufts of grass, etc. So I'm going to put in some foliage, first of all, on the fir trees. Just touching gently, look, to represent some new foliage. And then I'm going to go back to the Derwent Water brush and we're going to put some foliage on the left. This needs to be darker, so I'm just going to put a hint of foliage in various parts. The brush is too wet, so I'm just taking it off on the tissue. You'll notice I've always got a tissue in my hand. Don't forget, paint is not a gift, it's not inspiration. It's perspiration, practice makes perfect. I've been teaching for 35 years and anybody can paint. If you really want to do it, you can. Now again, let's go and put some highlights in. I can go back over here now, while it's dried a bit. I think we'll have a couple of gauze bushes in here. Few highlights again. We'll have a light bit here, look. We'll need to add some depth later on, but just think of this as the underpainting. Right, I'm going to just put a few highlights in here, not a lot. Again, I'm going to have a little bush. Right, let's put in some structure to the trees. I want a little rigger brush with a bit of white and a bit of raw sienna. 
I'll just paint in here, look. A few bits of structure. Now when you're painting, you can't paint flapping around like a budgie. Rest your arm on it, so you've got full control. Then just twitch at the tops like that to get the delicate effect of branches at the top. These little things that make all the difference. And the paint wants to be more watery here, because you're painting very thin lines. That will do.